Hey guys, uh, we are back digging a few more potatoes. We still got half a field to go here. And we're learning that one thing, uh, being as we've left them now, we're up to 150 days now. And uh, we've learned that by leaving them so long, all the vines that have run out in the rows everywhere, now they have potatoes on them. And we're having to be really careful. We're hitting some of them with a fork because they're way off out in the rows and stuff like that. Uh, here's a prime example right here. This is off out in the middle of the row. And right here, when I dig out there, we're finding potatoes all out in the middles of the rows, which is fine because we can feed those to the cows because they're not big enough to really do anything with. But it's making it a little bit more difficult to actually dig potatoes. And the ground is kind of wet a little bit, so we're having a little bit of problem with that too. We're trying to get them out before they ruin. That's nice. Those are just nice potatoes, guys. One of the things about leaving them so long is that uh, weeds do take over, and that's something that we're having problems with. Now, we feed the grass to the cows, and a lot of people ask us, why don't y'all just go in and mow them off or, you know, and then put a plow in behind it? It's because we try to utilize every bit of the natural resources here on our homestead for our animals. Uh, the cows love the grass. Uh, they love the sweet potato vines. They love all these little potatoes like that. And if you're running a plow through here, you do a lot of damage to your potatoes. And we try to keep from doing as much damage as possible to the potatoes. <laughs> Guys, one of the things we're noticing is that uh, we are back in the cycle for the stink bugs again. We're, they're starting to pop up everywhere in these potatoes here. So we try to keep up with all that and keep records of it so that we know when the certain cycles for stink bugs are. It helps, it helps with planting. Oh, they do not mess with uh, sweet potatoes. Well, they haven't with ours, let's just put it that way. And that's what happens when one gets broke off from the plant. It begins to sprout on the end right here. And that potato will usually become a very woody tasting potato. So that one will go to the cows. One thing we're not noticing as of yet is mice problems. Usually when you leave them, you run into problems with mice. And we haven't, uh, haven't had that problem yet, or at least I haven't run into it. But, <laughs> but yeah, look up yonder. I mean, yeah, so that's possible still. We still have all this to go, so it might be a problem before we before get through. Before we get through, it might be a problem. In this area around this tree, it seems we're getting little potatoes. Yeah, well, we hadn't got to the big ones yet, so. There's one. See? <laughs> look at that. Now, that's nice. We're mainly fooling with all these vine potatoes out here, and I guess I need to clean up a little bit more area here where I can dig. And that oak tree hinders these right in this area right here. We may get a few big ones, but not as many in this general area right here where he's at right now. Well, these white ones, they'll run 30 feet over there. Yeah. 
white ones that have a lot of potatoes per per plant. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. This is all off of one plant. And I'm not through. The white's beating the red production wise. Reason my Big daddy time. said you always want potatoes, plant the whites. Production wise. <laughs> Look at that. They still coming. <laughs> wow. And I'm still not through. I'm just getting into all the vines and the weeds here. I still hear stuff cracking. Whoa. Up. I mean, really? So far, this is just this one plant right here. And I'm, I'm not through. I just got to get up where I can get through stuff. One plant. There's as many there as we did in a, what, a five-foot section of the red? Well, more than five foot. Look how long. Look at the vines that go with it. Cherokee tan vines, huh? Yeah, I'm telling you. And the cows are going to be happy. There's one there that actually got covered up. Let's see if I can finish some more of this. Cause this is where the plant was right here with this grass I went back there cows will love that you're a kingfisher all right let's see if there was any more yep I see some right there Little one. That little one here. You red from the vine from the other side running across there, but uh, so that's it. Looks like for that one. Fix me into the next one, right? Yeah. We dug twenty feet here. For the reds and got this many right here we dug one plant for the whites and got that many i'm on the second plant now right here and i want you to look at this this and this is not actually the plant this is where the vine rooted this is not the plant the plant's over here this is the rooting of the vine right here look at this this is just vine potatoes here those are strictly vine. That's not the plant. See? It's a vine. That's just a vine. We're going to keep moving toward the plant and see what we come up with. Oh, I just see I broke the end off of one. See another little bitty one right here. Look at what you're getting into. I'm getting to the plant. N not yet. The, Look at this. The plant? Is that the plant? That's the plant right there. Okay. This is just another plant. This, this is the second plant. The ones I just dug up was just where the vines had, had got dirt on them and started rooting. Wow. Whoa. Look at that. Jeez. I tell you, people may like red ones, but the advice of my daddy was right. There's a little one. If you want potatoes, plant the white ones. Because they're going to make. Okay, this is two plants. This is 20 feet a row. 
You be the judge, guys. The whites or where it's at. That is a potato. Look at that. How much does it weigh? That probably weighs a good five or six pounds. All right, this is that oh, one. Look at here. This is we're still. Well, we ain't quite through with that one plant he's did, working on. Yeah, I'm still pulling up this one. This plant. is the third plant, so it's gonna almost fill our five-gallon bucket. That one potato is gonna fill it. So this is the third plant. Another little one there, but yeah, I see that cow potato, but um, that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, guys. That's uh, I mean, look at the space right here we've come. And how many potatoes we've got. We've got a lot more potatoes per vine. We've dug the same amount of distance on two rows here. We dug about 20 feet on two rows. Uh, this is what we got off of the white potatoes. And this is what we got off the reds. Um, one thing we did notice is where the grass was real heavy at, there were a lot fewer potatoes. Where the grass was not heavy at, I mean... We got that kind of stuff. You know, it's uh, it's amazing. So it goes to prove that the cleaner you can keep your garden, uh, the better results you will get. Uh, so red potatoes versus white sweet potatoes. My daddy grew up during the Great Depression. And he told me, he said, son, you may not always get what you want, but it's about having something to eat. And he's the one who told me to stay with the whites. He says, if you want to make sure you always have some potatoes to eat, he said, plant you some white ones because they always make an abundance. And I am actually seeing the wisdom behind that now. So we will always be planting uh, plenty of whites here just because they're more sustainable. And I love the taste of the red ones. But Ms. Wanda fixes the white ones, and she puts a little brown sugar on them. And to be honest with you, I can't really tell the difference. Uh, I mean, the color's different, but the taste, uh, we put a few pecans in with them, some ground sugar, and, and bake them that way. And guys, they're just as good as the other ones. Uh, the fact that people always eat red sweet potatoes is just one of the things that it's what people have always done. You know, you got to be able to step outside the comfort zone. Now, we have some purple ones planted. We'll probably be checking them out a little bit later. We grew them last year. Uh, they're like the whites. They're a little bit drier than the reds are. But guys, I'm sure we haven't tested the purples, but I'm sure if we put the brown sugar and the pecans and all with them, they'll be just as good as the reds, you know. So we're going to be testing them a little bit later on. But this is the results of today here at Deep South Homestead. They're both in the same garden, side by side, same amount of fertilized to each one of them, same growing conditions, this versus this. You be the judge of which you would rather have in your garden for next year during the coming famines that we may face in this country. If you just have a very small space to plant and you're looking for a, a lot of potatoes, you know, the whites are probably going to outproduce the reds. The thing that Ms. Wanda has figured out is that you can use the white sweet potatoes in place of any white, like an, like an Irish potato, like a red Lesota or a red Pontiac or something like that, uh, the, the German Butterball, I mean, any of these uh, white potatoes, you can use these in place of them like in casseroles and soups and stuff like that, and most people will never know the difference. So, to me, this is the most all-around versatile potato that you can grow for the homestead is the white sweet potato. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.
does it every time. You got problems? <laughs> they don't care. She just wants to be loved. All she, she wants, wants to do is be loved on, that's she all. She wants to be loved on, don't you, Minnie Minnie? She's just a big old baby. Me and her every morning in the barn. I rub her and play with her and just she just loves it. She's gonna be a big girl now. Mama's gonna have another baby, so you gotta be a big girl. Yeah. Lick on me. You know, lick your hand. She loves to lick you. Look, Candy. Look. Come on, Candy. Oh, you want loving too. I'm sorry. Did I not love on you? Huh? Did I not love on you? Yeah, I missed you, didn't I? Well, here. You don't want to eat. You want to be loved? Is that what it is, huh? You just want to be loved. You big cow. You're going to be big enough to have us babies before long, aren't you? What you licking on me, huh? I know, y'all jealous. I'm surprised that's going over here. He just ain't sick. <laughs> Go lick your legs. <laughs> and Dolly's jealous now. See here? What look oh, what's look at Dolly. Come here, Dolly. Dolly knows something's going on. Come on, Dolly. Hello, Dolly. Come on. They're all so full they don't know what to do. What have I got? Look at that. You done figured it out, haven't you, girl? You gotta eat that one first. I put it crossways in your mouth. You having trouble? Yeah, Miss Dixie. That's like feeding a carrot to something. Like giving a carrot to a mule, ain't it? Yeah. Come on. You want to eat, you just don't want me to touch it. Chew it up. Chew it up first. <laughs> she said, what? What? I'm not going to hurt you. You know that. You feed me. When are you going to have us a baby? You about to pop. You about to bust? You need to have that baby. She likes a baby. Hey girl. Right here. Oh, Mr. Dexter here, he's just having himself a ball. He's just eating away. All right, one more. One more. This is it. Good girl. You still don't want me touching you. You don't want me to touch you, do you? Come on. You like me to feed you. We're going to get there, aren't we? Huh? We're going to get there? Is that it? I don't have no more. I don't have any more. I don't have any more. Sorry. That's it. That's it. That ain't a sweet potato. She knows they're supposed to be food in them hands. <laughs> 